What's up guys, Oscar Gomez here from Master Automotive Training, SmartAutoTraining.com. On today's tech tip video, we're gonna be talking about the number one subject that technicians hate. No, I'm not talking about electrical. I'm talking about lap scopes. How many of you guys own a lap scope? How many of you guys paid $2,000 for it, but it sits in the corner of the toolbox covered in dust? If that's you, go ahead and stay tuned. This tech tip video today is gonna to show you guys how to use the basics on your lap scope so this way you can get rid of the number one fear of technicians, which is using a lap scope. Go ahead and dust them off, charge them up, get them ready, let's hit it. When you're looking at a lap scope screen, you're gonna start seeing a bunch of little squares. Those squares are called graduals. When you're looking at the graduals within the screen, you still need to determine what the hell am I looking at? Looking at the horizontal portion of your lap scope, that's your time. So whenever we say increase the amount of time, that just means we wanna see more of a picture within those 10 graduals. When we say decrease the time, that means we wanna see less of a picture within the actual graduals. So if you have a lap scope that's set to 10 seconds, that means you're gonna have a one second per division equaling a total of 10 seconds. So for every individual um, line that you see on your scope, that it would be 10 seconds. When you're talking about voltage, voltage is a vertical reading, zero to whatever you set your scope to. If you see 10 actual divisions and your scope is set to 10 volts, that means that each individual division is a one volt division. So if you see that a voltage trace starts at four and jumps up to six, then that means you're gonna have one, two, two volts per division up to six. If you see that it starts at four milliseconds and it goes to eight milliseconds because you have a 10 second screen, that means each individual division is one second. So it gives you a total of two seconds for that on time of whatever you recorded. Another thing I like to add, whenever you're looking at a lap scope and you're adjusting your time, your time and voltage setting is adjusted however you wanna set it up. Remember, it's your scope. However, over time, you're gonna start developing methods and actual settings that you like or prefer, which is amazing, because that's how you should set up your own scope, okay? One thing you wanna pay attention to is, a lot of technicians I've noticed when they start using a scope, they go into a really short time on their scope. What that's gonna to lead to is gonna give you a more defined trace. However, you're not gonna be able to see dropouts, glitches, shorts, or anything within your trace because you're seeing it very relative. One thing that I like to recommend that was taught to me was the picket fence. So as a picket fence, you wanna do a super long uh, capture of that actual trace where you're gonna see glitches, dropouts, and you'll be able to see weird stuff within the pattern because you're watching it for a longer period of time. So one of the things that I recommend is make sure that when you're using your lap scope for the first time, and let's say you're looking at a camshaft position sensor, record it for a long period of time, pause it, then come back, and then you can zoom into it if you want, do whatever you want to it, but make sure you record it over time. This way, if you see any dropouts, you know where that problem is, and you know what you're gonna go ahead and chase. The next thing on your scope that you should re pay really close attention to is the trigger. No, I'm not talking about your gun. I'm talking about the trigger on your actual lap scope. So what the trigger does is it's gonna allow you to set where you want your trace to begin. So this way you can have a better opportunity to capture the beginning of the trace, the end of the trace, or how long you want the trace to, to display. So there are four different types of triggers you can set on your scope. The most first one would be none, which I don't recommend. If you've taken any of the ASCs lately, the L1 or the A8, they usually ask or reference lap scope actual uh, pictures, and if you have a scope that has a picture that we call dancing across the screen, this means that you don't have a trigger set up. You're gonna see the trace go back and forth, up and down, all over the place. So it's harder for you to figure out if there's a problem because you can't control exactly where that trace starts, ends, or where it's gonna come back once it repeats itself. So none is not a good idea. The second one would be auto. So the auto function is a function that was introduced or input into your scope by the scope manufacturer. So they're gonna set it up to how they want to. Remember what I said earlier, lap scopes are you. 
You run the scope, you set up the scope, it's your preference. I can set it up one way, but it might not appeal to you. So you gotta set it up however you want. I'm not a big fan of the auto, because the auto function, you know, it's just preset. I like to do things myself, so I usually don't use the auto function. However, if you're just beginning, go ahead and start with that, and then you can start working your way into the other ones. The third option on your scope for trigger is repeat. What that means is you're going to set your trigger at a certain point and then your pitcher is going to keep repeating consistently over and over in that same area, which usually helps us whenever we're trying to do a representation or a pitcher, let's say of a fuel injector. We want to see how long the injector's on time is or pulse width. And if we do a repeating, we're going to be able to see it open and close over time. That's going to give us a better idea of where our starting voltage is, how it's getting dropped or pulled to ground, and then how it comes back uh, after the pencil gets released. So it's always a good idea to use repeat. I like that function. The fourth trigger is single. If you're at the shop, you're by yourself, you can't run, you can't start the car and still try to watch the screen, you set it to single. What that's gonna do is once you start the car, once the, the trace is graphed, it stops, it freezes, Saves that capture. When you come back, you can go ahead and review that capture so you know exactly what and what you saw. Okay, so you don't lose any of that good information. Single's really good, especially when you're by yourself or if you're just trying to capture one single trace and that's it. Other than that, you're really not gonna use it much. The one you're gonna use a lot more is the repeat function, which is the one I really like. Continuing with trigger, there are two different ways you can set up your trigger. You can set it up for a rising edge or a falling edge. What the hell am I talking about, right? So when you're looking at a trace, let's say you got a, a voltage trace that's flatlining at four volts, now all of a sudden it shoots up vertically to 10 volts, you can set your trigger to five volts whenever it captures a rising voltage or rising edge from four to 10 volts, it's gonna go ahead and trace the before and after, so this way you can go back and see it before and after on the rising edge. Now, there's another setting called the falling edge. What the falling edge is, if you have a tray starting at 12 volts, then it gets pulled to ground, you can set it to four volts, so this way whenever it drops from 12 down to zero, it's gonna capture everything from before the four up to 12 and down all the way to zero. This way you can determine, did it fully go to ground or not? It just depends on how you want to set it up. I have students that love rising edges. I have students that love falling edges. There's no right or wrong. It's just however you want to set it up. Remember, you own the scope. It's up to you how you want to set it up. Once you get comfortable using your scope, you can do whatever you want with it. Set it up the way you want. Make it do whatever you want. Remember, it's just a giant voltmeter. There's nothing that's gonna happen. It's just giving you great information, fast, accurate, and this way it can help you be 100% more accurate on your diagnosis. That's it, guys. Those are the basics to your lap scope. It's voltage, time, set your trigger, and use it. That's the most important thing. Remember, a DSO is exactly the same as a DVOM, a digital volt, volt ohm meter. It's going to do voltage, but it's going to give you representation. It can also do resistance, and it can also do amperage. It doesn't matter. Whatever you need it to do, it can do it. The only thing is, you have to be not afraid of it. Grab it, charge it, dust it off, use it. I guarantee you, the more and more you use it, the more you're going to become accustomed to it, the more you're going to want to use it. There's a lot of other uh, advanced things you can do with your scope. You need to master the basics first. Once you master the basics, then you can start moving on to in-cylinder pressure transducers, uh, delta pressure transducers. You can start checking exhaust gas pressure using a pressure sensor. There's a lot of different stuff you can start doing with your scope, but once you understand and master the basics. So I want you guys as homework to use your scopes, connect it to a throttle position sensor, use your signal output, set it from zero to five volts and start messing with it. Change your volt, change your time, change your voltage, see how it changes, move your trigger around, see how everything um, works. Once you feel comfortable with that, then you can start going into the more advanced user stuff, which I'll be showing you guys as we go along. What I want you guys to remember guys is 
with your lab scope, it's not scary. We just make it scarier than what it really is. Grab it, use it. I'm dead serious, guys. If you want to become the best automotive tech, how are you going to do it? Grab your lab scope, use it, master it. Um, we're having a diagnostic class coming up pretty soon. If you guys are interested in finding out more about being the best automotive tech you can, make sure you guys reach out to me or my staff here at Master Automotive Training. We'll do the best we can to show you guys what we're all about. We're here to make sure you guys become the best. How am I going to do that? Keeping you guys engaged with these videos because these videos are the best to make you the best. Make sure guys, as I always say, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Make sure you guys are letting everybody know about these videos so that way they can become the best as well. This way we make sure that we have the best automotive technicians out on the field here in Southern California. As always guys, a good technician's always learning. Signing off here, Oscar Gomez, smartautotraining.com.